Hi, it's Rob. I'm in the process of creating a tutorial on implementing a CI-CD pipeline on AWS, incorporating Jenkins and Ansible, and thought I'd create this quick video on how to install and configure Ansible on an Amazon EC2 instance in the event anyone is interested. This video is really just a how-to video, so I won't be going into a lot of detail, but I'll take a deeper dive into Ansible in the next video. To start out, I'll go to Security Groups in the EC2 console and create a security group. I'll give it a name and a description of Ansible Security Group and edit the inbound rules. First, I'll add a rule for SSH, a rule for HTTP, and a custom TCP rule for port 8080 for the HTTPD server. And create the security group. Now I'll go to instances, launch instance, and launch three EC2 instances. I'll give them a name, select the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. For instance type, I'll leave T2 Micro. And under Network Settings, I'll select my Ansible Security Group. Then launch the instance. I'll proceed with all the key pair because I'll SSH into them using EC2 Instance Connect. Go back to the EC2 console. And here I'll change the server names. The first I'll change to Ansible control node. And the other two, I'll name app server one. And app server two. And these will be the servers the HTTPD will be deployed on using the Ansible playbook. So from here, I'll connect to the Ansible control node. Elevate my privileges and change the host name. And I'm going to do this because I'll have three EC2 instance connect sessions open. And when I switch between them, I want to easily be able to identify which server I'm on. So in order to see the IP address replaced by the host name, I'll need to exit and then elevate my privileges again. And here we see the server name. Next, I'll do a yum update. Then a yum install to install Ansible. And actually I need to execute this command to install Ansible 2 from Amazon Linux Extras. And now I'll just check the Ansible version. And that looks good, so Ansible's been installed. The next thing I want to do is generate an RSA key, which I'll add to the authorized keys on App Server 1 and App Server 2. Now I'll just go ahead and cat the public key because I'll need to copy this when I add it to the other servers. Now, I'll jump back over to the EC2 console, select App Server 1, and connect to that. Again, I'll elevate my privileges, set the host name to App Server 1, exit, and then elevate my privileges again. And here we see the new host name. 
Now I'll go ahead and edit the authorized key file in the SSH folder. Then jump back over to my Ansible control node. Copy the key, paste it in, and save the file. And here we see the key has been added. Now I'll do the same for App Server 2. Now I'll jump back over to the control node and change directory into Etsy Ansible. And if I do a directory listing, we'll see the Ansible config file. So I'll go ahead and edit this file. And then I want to scroll down and uncomment inventory and uncomment sudo user. Save the file. and then cat the host file. And here we see this is the default Ansible host file, which gives examples on how to enter the target servers and target server groupings, which Ansible will interact with. So I'm just gonna move the default host file to a backup file and create a new host file. And in here, I want to add the groupings for our app servers. So I'll head back over to the EC2 console, select the first app server, and grab the private IP, and paste that in. Then grab the private IP for the second app server. Paste that in, and save the file. Now, because I've added the Ansible control nodes public key to both App Server 1 and App Servers 2's authorized keys in the SSH folder, and I've added the private IPs of App Server 1 and App Server 2 to the Ansible hosts file, I can now execute an Ansible ping specifying the app servers, and we should be able to connect to them. So here is trying to connect to the first server. So I'll say yes. And here we see I was able to successfully connect to the first server. And I'm just going to control C out of here and execute that command again. Say yes. And now we see I'm able to connect to the second as well. So let me just clear this and execute it again. Now that I've added both IPs. And again, we see we're successful on the first IP and the second. So now inside of the Etsy Ansible folder, I'll create a new folder named Playbooks and change directory into it. And then create a new file named HTTPD server YAML, which will hold the contents of our Ansible playbook. And then we'll jump over to VS Code and take a look at the source. And here I've started by giving the playbook a name or a description that this playbook will install the HTTPD server. I've given the host property a value of app servers, and that's the host grouping with the private IP addresses for app server one and app server two. I've set the become property to true to elevate Ansible's privileges and then I've defined the tasks I want to execute. The first task will be to install HTTPD, and the task to execute will be the yum command, the name will be the HTTPD package, and the state will be present. 
Then the next task will be to copy the index.html file, which I'll create in a file named httpd.conf in the EC2 users source folder I'll add into the destination on app server one and app server two in the var www.html folder as index.html. I'll set the mode on the permissions for the index.html file to 0644 and set backup to yes. Then the next task will be to start the httpd service. So the task is service, the name httpd, and the state will be started. Then I'd like to get the httpd version by executing the command httpd minus v and in order to display the results of that command, I'll register it as version command output. And then I have a debug task setting the variable to version command output dot standard outlines. Additionally, I'd like to get the httpd server status by executing the command systemctl status httpd and registering that command's output and printing it using a debug statement to standard out lines. Now I'll copy this code and paste it in and save the file. Now in the slash home EC2 user folder, I'll create a source folder in which I'll add an httpd conf file, which will contain the HTML for the home page served on the HTTPD server. This is a simple HTML file, which just displays demo v1 in an h1 element. I'll save the file. Now, with the Ansible configuration set, the host set, and the playbook created, as well as the HTTPD conf file, which will become the index.html file, on the app server one and app server two's var www html folder, I can execute the Ansible playbook command, passing it the path to the playbook name httpd underscore server dot yaml in the playbooks folder, specifying the hosts I want to target. And now this is complete. If we scroll up. Here we see it started to install the HTTPD server. It gathered facts successfully on both of the servers, installed HTTPD, copied the index file, started the service, and got the version on both servers. And here we see the output of the debug task for getting the HTTP version. And we see it's Apache 2457 on both servers. Then it executed the task to get the HTTPD service status on both servers. And here we see the debug output for the Apache HTTPD service on the first server. And its status is active running as it is on the second server as well. So now let's jump over to app server one. And if we do a directory listing of var www.html, we see the index.html file. And if we cat the file, we see our HTML. And let's just jump over to server two and do the same. And that looks good. So let's head over to the EC2 console and grab the public IP for the first server and hit that in the browser tab. And that looks good. So let's grab the IP for the second server and hit that. And that looks good as well. So that completes this video on installing and configuring Ansible on EC2. I hope you found it useful.